The second section is going to be how to convert the, a, a molecular structure to a 3D mesh. So this is where we can go ahead and get started in Blender. So if you open Blender just from a brand new, completely empty file, this is what you'll see. If you're working from the file, the, the lesson um, starting file, there's a Blender file in there called Start, I believe. And if you open Start, you'll see uh, a different scene. And so it's uh, these first few steps, so sections, Section one, you don't need to follow along with because it's actually just getting the structure, so it's not Blender yet. But just for transparency, I wanted to demo absolutely everything so you can replicate it. So you'll notice that we have a cube, we have a camera, and we have a light. This is what you start off with in Blender. If you are, just to mention, if you're using a three-button uh, three mouse, the commands are a little bit different. If you hold down your scroll bar, it, that's what's going to allow you to uh, move around and rotate within your 3D window. And then if you hold down Shift and then your middle button, that allows you to drag. If you're using just a trackpad, that's OK as well. So if you press down two fingers on your trackpad, it allow you to rotate like this. And if you hold down Shift and two fingers, that will allow you to translate in the screen space. And that should be able to, that's pretty much all you need to be able to move around in Blender. OK, so the first thing that I want to do is we want to get our structure, since we probably don't want to uh, do a render with just a block in the middle. So the the best way to get a structure, so if you have a, a PDB or um, anything like that, is to use Chimera X. You'll see that this process is ex almost completely painless in Chimera X. You can use Pymol. I'll eventually put some notes on Canvas for anybody who wants to try to get it from Pymol. But it's better just to take your scene from Pymol and just replicate it quickly in Chimera X. So what you would do is you would open a PDB. The PDB that I'm using for this is actually the PDB from uh, 2440. You'll remember this from homework number two, where they asked what interactions increase the binding between the MHC and the peptide. So we're going to go ahead and render out this structure. So the first part is just going to be to clean it up a little bit. So I'm going to delete all of the water molecules. That'll delete them from the pocket. Then I want to clean the structure up, make it a little bit smaller so we can only focus on the binding portion of the MHC. So I'm going to type in remove. So delete chain B, delete chain A. But chain A contains what I want. So I'm just going to delete the back half of it. So delete that. And then um, next. There's a lot of atoms here, all these amino acids interacting with my peptide. So if you want to get rid of those, you just can say hide the atoms in chain A. That'll get rid of those. Now next, in Blender, we want to make this look a, a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to go for a, a thicker style, so cartoon style width 3.5. This will make the cartoon a little bit easier to see. And then I'm going to change the thickness. So cartoon style thickness 1. This will give it kind of a pasta effect. And then lastly, for the peptide, you might want to add some hydrogens. So this can just be done with add H and then C. And then the last, the last two things are um, in Blender, we're going to be changing materials and coloring different things. So it's important that each different element in your scene has a different color. So here you'll see that the protein is the same color as my carbons, which is a problem. So we can just say color by element. And then I'll change my carbons color. And then it's a little bit hard to tell 
what's going on with the peptide. I can't tell what residues are what. What's important here is that it's occupying space in the binding site. So I'm gonna just change this to, change the style of chain C, which is my peptide, to a sphere representation. And there you go. You have your starting structure. Depending on your scene, it'll be different as you play around in Chimera just to get what you want. But once you have what you want, it's really easy. You just enter a command. So we're gonna save out our file. I'm gonna say, give it a name, structure.glb. Then I'm going to save its format. And the format that we use is GLTF. This is a 3D mesh format. And then the last thing to remember is you add instancing true. This will um, save out the color information so we can use that in Blender. And just press enter. Now we can exit out of there.